Bible says that the trumpet will so let Jesus take care of the sin problem. It is really a heaven solution, a God solution. That's our emphasis. So we have assurance of salvation. And there is no force on earth that can withstand what God is about to do. Welcome to another study of God's word today to help us through our lesson study this morning. Uh, is Pastor Carl Hastings, director at the SLC. We're happy to have him today. First time in our Friday edition of the Whispering Hope Daily Sabbath School Study. Welcome, uh, Pastor Hastings. Thank you very much. And let me say good morning to all of our um, listening and viewing audience. It's certainly a joy to be here with you this morning. I will do the memory text and you will invite God's presence in our midst. So let us bow our heads over the praise Pastor Hastings invite God's presence in our midst. Father, we give you thanks this morning. We thank you for this awesome we have that early in the morning we could open your words and we could truly bask in the sunshine of your mercies and your grace. Today, as we listen to your voice once again, we ask that you may touch our intellect May the deep truths of this lesson truly, uh, Lord, minister to us today and may we be able to advance in our knowledge of you, we pray for Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. Our memory text for this week says, Now all these things happened to them as examples, and they were written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the age are come. Well, we haven't gone through our memory text for the week, so Pastor, would you care to share what you glean from our memory text and then we are going to go into some questions one of which we got from our listeners uh, yeah but just briefly in passing what should we learn from our memory text let me just go over the memory text and say again it says now all these things happen to them as examples and they were written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the ages have come I often say, Elder, that it takes a fool to learn from his own mistakes because there's so many examples for us to learn from as we traverse this dusty earth of sin. And so the, the text is just telling us that all of the happenings that the children of Israel would have gone through, they are for our example and for our learning today. So we have no excuse in relation to what happens a long life path in relation to sin and disobedience to the will of God, because we would have all the examples of the children of Israel on how, you know, God time and time again has to have to um, chastise them uh, so that they could learn valuable lessons in life. So these are examples that they know for us to learn from so that we do not have to go over and make the same mistakes that the children of Israel would have made. Okay. So, Thank you for that, Pastor. But uh, as we went through the lesson this week, one YouTube viewer uh, sent in a question and it says, how are we daily walking back into situation God rescued us from? And that is, had to do with, I think, Tuesday's lesson when it indicated that they wanted to, rather than going to Canaan, they was saying to Moses, it is better that we had died back in Egypt. And so that's, I believe, what prompted the question for the person to say, even in our life, how many times that we have walked back into a situation that God had rescued us from. Yes, and this is plain to see time and time again in our own experiences, we realize that um, oftentimes we like the easy way out of everything. And anything that looks hard or most difficult to do, we would more often than not tend not to want to go there. Uh, but God often reaches out to us in situations that require us to move by faith. The Bible says faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. And so God oftentimes asks us to reach out in faith because it is only by faith can we really serve God. And oftentimes, because we love the easy way out, and the, you know, God oftentimes calls us to walk the highway and sometimes the rugged path because he wants us to do what? To trust in him. And the more we are able to trust in him, the easier it is for him to really 
you know, work through and in us, even in the most difficult of circumstances. So the, the, the thing is, you know, the easy way out is always the most possible way for man because of our sinfulness and because of who we are. And so fact and point be clear that most time, most time than not, we will often make the wrong choices. We will often go over the same mistakes because we are afraid of the unknown. We are afraid of what may happen to us. And so it's easy to see because of our sin, why we would, you know, make the same mistake over and over again. But again, God is calling upon us to trust him by faith. When we trust God in faith, all things are possible. Okay, excellent, Pastor. Thank you for that explanation. I hope Monique W., I think that's the person who submitted that question, would be satisfied with our answer this morning. I'm looking back at the lesson for the week, Pastor, looking back at the lesson for the week. What are three takeaways if we could find that much? I find it to be a very interesting lesson. I, it's like it's the Bible. It's talking about over 2,000 years ago, probably. And it's like it's capturing what's happening now. So what are the three takeaways? Because I think we really need them this morning. Thank you very much for that question. And indeed, it is difficult to look on an old experience, um, but it's, it is even as fresh as, as we're speaking because of our own challenges and our own situations that we are made to go through on a daily basis. There are many takeaways that we can take from this week's lesson, underlining our number of commandments. And if you look at the, the passage there outlined, I think it's 1 Corinthians, you see that, that we should not covet, we we should not be idolaters. We should not be fornicators. So those are overriding things. But I have three solid takeaways that we could take away from this week, or lessons that we can take away from this week lesson. And the first one is interceding for our leaders is much more powerful than criticizing them. And, and we see this when Aaron prayed for his sister, Miriam. After she, um, she and Aaron sided against Moses, and Moses called on the name of God, and, and Miriam, she was, her hand turned to uh, a leprosy. And, and we saw Aaron prayed for her. And, and, and because of Aaron's prayer, we're told that, that, you know, even though she had to go through seven days of, of having leprosy, we're told that God repented and God turned on the decision that he would have made. And so praying for our leaders, you know, most times as we pray for our leaders, um, as our leaders fall into situations, the, the, the common thing to do is to criticize. You know, some people even hide behind um, what we call constructive criticism. And nothing is wrong with constructive criticism. But sometimes it's an easy way out to say, I am, I am criticizing constructively. But the, the, the best thing that we can take away from this week lesson is that we should pray for our leaders when they make mistakes, when they fall into traps, or even without falling into traps, we should pray instead of criticizing. The second takeaway we can, our lesson we can take away from this week is when we forget what God has done for us, we want, we distort the present and don't see the future clearly. And that is powerful. You see, when, when we have to understand and recognize that we cannot forget the way God has led us. We cannot forget how many challenging situations that God would have brought us through. And so we must understand if we ever lose sight of that, we are only distorting, we are only bringing problems to the present situations in our lives. And we're also making the future blurred. And we see this expressly again in the children of Israel when the 10 spies, the 12 spies, sorry, went out to, to view the land of Canaan. Are the promised land of Canaan, and 10 brought back a faulty report, and two gave a positive report. You see, the children of Israel agreed with the 10 because they had forgotten how God had led. They had just crossed the Red Sea. God rained manna from heaven. God did so many wonderful exploits, and so many wonderful, brought Israel through so many difficult situations. And, they, and not too long after, they would have forgotten. So we cannot forget. Anytime we forget the leading of God, it's, going on, it's only going to make our present situation becomes distorted 
and it's going to make our future blurred. We'll, be a, we'll not be able to see the future and what God for, can do for us. And my final takeaway from this week, the final lesson I want us to take away from this week is building our faith up is essential to keep presumptuousness away. Building our faith up. You see, faith is the, is the opposite of presumptuousness. And, and so if we build our faith up, we will keep ourselves from becoming haughty. We will keep ourselves from becoming presumptuous and flying in the face of God and allowing and allow God to truly just, just lead in our life and cause us day by day to continue to climb higher and higher in our spiritual quest and our walk for eternal life and salvation. Okay, excellent. Well, the only thing, Pastor, I advocated that we should pray for our leaders this week rather than criticize. But I did not see it in the way you uh, shared it this morning. So certainly, I have, that is going to be one of my takeaways out of the lesson. <laughs> Thank you for that. The next question, Pastor, is in the first paragraph of Friday's lesson, Ellen White stated that their hearts were unchanged and seemed to suggest that they were only terrified because of the consequences. What is wrong in their apparent reason for acknowledging their sins? So they no. became terrified, and so they acknowledged, we have sinned. What is so wrong with that? Well, first of all, it's important to acknowledge your sin. And if another person is looking at this through a different binoculars, they would want to look and say, well, but at least they, they acknowledge your sin. But when we look at what Spirit of Prophecy is saying, and Ellen G. White is, is inciting here, is that the reason why they turn is not so much because it's not because they were repentant. They were, af they were afraid of the punishment. They were afraid of the consequences. And because of the consequences and the dire consequences, I may say, they, they are prone to turn. And again, and we see this over and over again with the children of Israel. They would, they would fly in the face of God. They would be presumptuous before God. And when God meet out judgment, they would cry to Moses. And what Moses would do? Good old Moses. Moses will stand between God and the children of Israel. And he will plead for them. And so God would turn oftentimes. And what we see shortly after Moses would have done that and God turned. We see the children of Israel walking right back into the same old mess and even greater mess than they would have been in before. And so this is telling us there's no change. The heart has not been changed. The, the, the spirit was not tugging at the heart as to why there was a change. There was a change and a turning um, from wrong because they were afraid. They were afraid of the consequences and the, the, the punishment that they would receive if they would continue down a path in sin. And so what we want to understand, what God really wants from his children, God wants his Holy Spirit to minister and to, and to have its work to do with our hearts so that there will be a heart changing, a heart transforming, so that when a heart is transformed, the things we do before, we don't do them anymore. And this is what we're realizing. And Ellen G. White is quite correct because as we look at Israel's history, we see the same thing happening over and over and over again. And, and God is not pleased when we keep committing the same sins over and over again. And so this is very important. So Ellen, it, 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 what is really wrong with it? There was not a heart changing. There was no, uh, no intention of changing the heart and from stop sinning. There was only an intention to avert, to divert from away from the, the penalties or the punishment for the sins. Okay, excellent again. Excellent again. Pastor, it, it's all restlessness and rebellion as a result of not resting in Jesus. Uh, early this week, I said to, in the lesson, in our colloquial expression we say that the devil find work for idle hands but is it deeper than just the devil finding work for idle hand but rather because we're not resting in jesus and and this is so powerful this week uh, mm -hmm. for us to realize 
that many times the mistakes that we make and the, the wrong path that we will take in life is as a direct result of us. And this resting here is just not acknowledging the power of God to do great and mighty things in our lives. Um, again, I want to, to turn back to the 12, the 12 spies or the 12 selected men of Israel who were chosen to go to spy out the promised land. And again, 10 of them came back and they just did not have the confidence. And the people become very uh, restless. The lesson study speaks about animals and their, how they are able to, to know of impending danger uh, way before it happens. And it is this kind of restlessness that the lesson, I mean, akin our restlessness to as Christians in relation to Christ and what he wants to do to us and in our lives, whereby we become so afraid, we become so disturbed, you know, and, and think that, you know, heaven is going to come down and everything is going to collapse on our feet. And again, the reason why we turn to rebellion and restlessness is because we do not have the confidence to believe that God can and will do what he says he will do. Today I was listening to, uh, listening to a little um, inspirational there and it was talking about you know, um, going through storms and, and how important it is for, for the one going through the storm to realize the, the presence of God in that storm with them. You know, and the thing was saying, God never promises that we'll not go through storms, but he promised if we get into a storm, we will get, if we trust in him, we will get to the other side of the storm. And that's what God wants us to understand. And that's what the children of Israel did not have the confidence to believe Joshua and Caleb when they told them that we are greater than these men. We have the power and the might. We can take this city for God. They may be bigger men than us. They may, be, they may look stronger than us, but we are not fighting in our might. We are not fighting in our armor. We are fighting in the armor and in the might of Almighty God. And when we recognize this, um, Elder Joseph, when you recognize this, this restlessness will, will be averted and this rebellion will cease in the lives of God's children. So the, the, it is true. It is our restlessness and our restlessness and rebellion is as a direct result of not resting or trusting in the omnipotent arm of heaven. <laughs> no wonder we are so restless. That's all I'm going to say because it seems that Christian just has a, a canny way of just being restless. Never a dull day in the Christian experience having to deal with brethren, with brethren congregation with preachers. It's always a challenge. <laughs> yeah, so Pastor, we move on now to the discussion questions. And it says, discuss the difference between faith and presumption. Why would conquering the land of Canaan first be seen as an act of faith and then later, when the Israelites did attack, be seen as a presumptuous act? Yes, let's first of all look at faith and presumption. And we're told that genuine faith it is when God, it is when God um, is initiating the desire for change, and we respond with confidence to what God is initiating. In presumptuousness, presumptuousness, it, it is it is where we are the ones who are initiating the desire for change, and we are trying to force our desires on God by means and or uh, uh, by one means or another. And so we're seeing that faith is, or, or faith is God de derived and God led, whereas presumption is man derived and man led. And, and almost immediately, you can see that there is a great challenge there. When you're gonna cross our ideas, and the Bible says it, God says, my ways are not your ways and neither are my thoughts, your thoughts. But God's desire is that, uh, his ways become our ways and his thoughts become our thoughts. And so we are seeing there that between these two, there is a, a dichotomy. There is this, this war that is taking place because strong faith requires that we put our trust 
and our confidence in God. Whereas a presumption says, I am fearful and I will do anything possible to get myself out of whatever problem and God must come with me. And so there we go with that challenge. What makes what the children of Israel at first, if the children would have gone up and, and conquered a city, what make this right and, and good? Uh, let me get the right words and the correct words before I don't make it. In. How I was saying is basically yeah. that they, it was right for them to go up and conquer Israel. But when they did, actually Moses said to them, like, you can't go up. The Lord is not with you. And the Amorites and the Canaanites ran them. Right? What, what makes going up at the appointed time, that first time, what makes it right? And then at the latter end, when they decide to go up, what makes it wrong? You see, at the, that time, it was God led. God led them to the borderline. God is the one who sent them out, asked them for them to go out into spider land. It was God who was imbuing um, Caleb and Joshua with wisdom and with the power and the gusto to know that we can conquer Canaan. We can take it now and we're going to take it by storm. But at that point, they were afraid. They, they, they become presumptuous before God to the point that they even stoned Joshua and Caleb. They wanted to stone them. And so this is the challenge that we're having here. So at that point, it was God led. God was the one who was in charge of the decision to go up and to conquer. They choose not to go. When they were ready now, because they were wandering now for 30 years, 38 years later, and they wanted to go up now and conquer, God was not with them. And Moses told them, God is not with you. So this is presumptuousness in the sight of God. If God is not with you, why are you trying to go up? So if your leader is not with you, because Moses is not the leader of Israel, God is the leader of Israel. If your leader is not with you, why are you going up to take a city by yourself? Aren't you setting up yourself for a fall? And we're told some 20 something thousand men dropped dead because of a mistake that the children of Israel made to go up and to try to conquer Canaan. Are you with me? And so this is the challenge. So what makes it wrong the second time is that they were presumptuous. They moved on presumption. And because of that, God was displeased and God left them up to the enemy. And because of that, 24,000 men, fighting men, dropped dead. So we're looking at somewhat constructive criticism and what makes it? I, I, that's how I put it. Because the next question says, how do motive and circumstances play a big role in the difference between faith and presumption? And you know, some persons would want to put a good lashing on the preacher. Somebody said, why you came down on him so hard? Why you dealt so hard with the mission or the conference? And they say, look, it's just constructive criticism. Uh, what's different between motive and presumption <laughs> um, and circumstances? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Motive is just motive. Again, motive has to do everything in success and failure. Um, why you do what you do. That's your motive. I am doing it. They, they wanted to do it because they wanted probably to show Moses that God was with them. Either that or they wanted to show Moses that they can do it without him or without God. And because of that, they left themselves open to the elements and they were destroyed. So Motive, and the next one is? Circumstance. Circumstances. In the first circumstances, in first circumstance, all was clear. God made all provision. Provision was made. A plan was put in place um, as to how they're going to attack. Everything was laid bare, and they didn't have to really do anything because God had the plan outlaid. Just like when they conquered Jericho, God had the plan outlaid for them. But the second time around, the circumstances were different. They were without the power of God. They were without the covering and the Shekinah glory um, over them. So why are you taking a city without your God, without the one who you trust in for victory? That was not there. That crowning point was not there. The, the most integral element for their success was listen. Hence, you could, you could say the circumstances were them losing that battle and lose it and greatly as we would have seen in the story. So motive and your circumstances, oftentimes, a lot of the time, if not all the times, 
will play a great world, um, um, role in the outcome of your situation. Let us press on and look at, dwell more on the fact that though sin can be forgiven, we often have to live with the consequences of sin. How can you help those who struggle with knowing that they are forgiven, that they are forgiven a sin that nevertheless they still have negative impacts that perhaps impact them or their loved ones? Yes, or even their loved ones. Um, this is very important. Again, we see when uh, Miriam committed a fault and when time and time again the children of Israel sinned and uh, we have to make mention now of that important point that God made to them. You may have um, felt that because I am forgiving your sin that you will not suffer the consequences. You will always suffer the consequences and that's why a person who, who becomes promiscuous and contract the AIDS virus, um, yes, God forgives the individual, but you have the consequence of the, a the, the, the virus that will take a toll in your body. It will come to terms. And so no matter how much you try, unless the, by some miracle, um, you are healed of it. But diseases like AIDS, you know a day is coming when you will die. It's just like that. And the children of Israel, because of their murmuring, because of their presumptuousness, because they have forgotten how God has led them in the past and what great victories God has, has caused them to overcome and to come through. You know, God had to say to them, of all of you who left Egypt, only two will enter the promised land. Not even now, we have to even look at this, not even Moses and Aaron. <laughs> you know, Aaron was the high priest. Moses was the leader in the, in the wilderness. And none of them enter the promised land. And I want us to see how serious this is. Because as leaders as well, we have to be careful as we lead God's children that we do not allow the rigors and the daily routine and the challenges of ministry to get in our path and to hinder us from making it into heaven. You know, Moses is not lost and I believe Aaron is not lost. But the truth of the matter is, they could not see the promised land because of a mistake that they made because of the wailing and the backsliding of the children of Israel. So let's answer the question as it was asked. And to help somebody out there who really listening to us right now, it's important for us to recognize and to understand that God is a forgiving God. And if we have committed a sin and we come to God boldly, and the Bible says, come boldly before the throne of grace, that you may find forgiveness and mercy and pardon for your sins. So if you come boldly and honestly before God and you throw your weight at him and you throw all your faults at his feet and your mistakes at his feet and you ask God to forgive you, I want to assure you today that God has forgiven you. However, I must also carry on to say, not because he has forgiven you means that he has cleared you of all the consequences for the things that you have done. So you may have committed some crime. You may have gone out there and do things. And you may have to suffer to go to jail or, 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 or to be locked up or, or something because of a mistake that you have made. However, if you cry out to God, God will, and if you have done it already, has forgiven you. And also, not because you are going through the consequences for your sin means that God has not forgiven you. God has, and we must have the faith, and this is what the lesson is calling us to do, to have the faith to believe that what we ask of God, he will grant it unto us. So don't go about with these baggages and all these weight on your shoulders. Stop carrying your luggage and your sin with you. Leave it in the hands of God. If anybody knows how to take care of our sins, God knows exactly how. Excellent, excellent, Pastor. I would have said that you have summarized, but I can't let you get away this morning because many of us, like the children of Israel, on the verge of Canaan, are murmuring 
We are murmuring against church leadership. We are murmuring against conference. We are murmuring against the general conference. We are arguing about which virgins are correct. We are, there are so many things that are distracting us so close to the, the heavenly Canaan. And I just want you to give a word of encouragement that may bring somebody out of that dangerous situation so that God does not get angry with them. Oh, this is so powerful this week. I've learned so much and, and you know, I've been listening to these books um, over and over. It is important to listen to the word of God. And every day I will take up my phone and I will get the Bible and I will plug in my earphones and I will listen to the reading of God's word. And it's so powerful when you read these stories over and over again. But I know, like the children of Israel, we are on the verge of the promised land. Um, things are about to turn and God's children will we'll be able to, to go up and conquer New Jerusalem. And like the children of Israel, we have so many things that are happening all around us every day. Some have been mentioned by Elder Joseph, and there's so many other things. And, you know, there is something that is happening to the church we, today. We are majoring in minors. We are, we, are, we are falling out and are leaving the church over issues that are not even salvific. And this is, this is, this is, because when you look at people and we are we're in such a state that we can't see that what we're fighting over is so small and minute that it, it really don't worth us fighting over them. And there's so many other issues. We're talking about wives are leaving husbands and people are going in and other. We have so many issues that are taking place. But let me tell us something today, brethren. What really matters to God is our heart and our obedience to him. And I want to say to us today, let us obey God. Let us forget about all the little things that really don't matter. All of these lessons that we are doing, there are a few things that are coming to them. There are other things that we discuss and debate, but there are a few things that are coming to them. One, love. Two, obedience. Three, faith. You can continue to list the others. But these three, I want to keep us to keep for us. One, obedience. Two, faith. And three, what's the last one did I say? And three, love. love. Those are the themes. We study the covenant, um, the covenants, and, and all the covenant speaks of is L-O-V-E. The love that God has for us and the love that we should have for God and for one another. Let God lead us as we, as we go up. But the way God intends us to do and conquer the city as once so that we can be saved in God's kingdom. Okay, Pastor, we want to thank you for coming by this morning. Surely we had a good lesson. I believe that time is a, a not so good thing because time has robbed us of all the blessings and instruction that's bound up in this lesson this week. But we do hope that many would have grasped the concept and the message that God wants us to have in this troubled time. And so until next week, when we begin the next series, God bless you, may God keep you, and may you remain faithful until he comes. Have a wonderful day. When I get to heaven, gonna walk with Jesus. When I get to heaven, gonna see his face. Do you hear that, boys and girls? It's almost here. Our first ever children's crusade under the theme, Let's Go to Heaven Together. The Jennings SDA Children's Ministry is inviting all the boys and girls from the church and community. Oh yes, we have so many exciting activities just for you. Come out and experience a puppet show, craft time, health nugget, and a special night to have fun in Galore, and a whole lot more. Beginning at 6.30 p.m. nightly from Sunday 18 July, and ending with activities on Saturday, 31st July 2021, all at the Jennings Seventh day Adventist Church. Let's learn about how we can be saved, no matter how small we are. I can't wait to see you there. So many rewards in store. Be there.